with Rosie and everybody else to kick off this uh, charity. I know that cystic fibrosis is a rare condition, but the fact that it's rare doesn't mean that, like so many other things that afflict the whole world, that we in Gibraltar are not also, unfortunately, sometimes afflicted by these issues. And I think it's a massive step forward for Gibraltar to have people prepared to educate us all in what these rare conditions that can mean for those that uh, suffer them and for their families and how best to alleviate the sufferers and how to help the families deal with these conditions. So a charity to deal with cystic fibrosis is I think a very welcome step in the right direction. It's something that the government wants to support and that we want to show our support by having an important contingent here of ministers uh, tonight to display visibly how much we support the effort that Rosie is putting into this and that Winston is helping her with and that everybody who is working with the, the charity, both in the medical profession and outside it, um, believe that this is a worthy endeavour for Gibraltar. There's very little more that I can say because I don't pretend to know enough about the condition um, and I'm here to be educated as much as everybody else. But I'll tell you this, you can count without support, whether it's today to launch the charity or in the harder work that will come because I hope today is a happy day, a day of celebration because we're launching, but the hard work will come. I know you've been already through a lot of hard times in getting people to realise what the charity means for Rosie and what the, what the illness means for Rosie. But the hard work starts now and you can count with our support not just on a happy day like today, but in the future. When I woke up this morning, I saw it was raining, I thought it might be a blue day for some people, but it turned out to be purple for everyone. <laughs> so I'm delighted to be uh, supporting you with the purple time. I wish I could do more than just that and I hope in the future I would be able to. So it's my pleasure to declare the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation Gibraltar, I've read it off some of these t-shirts, <laughs> formally established in Gibraltar. <laughs> fibrosis because I would just call your flocks off and we'd be here all night. But what I would like to say in regards to the genetic side is that 1 in 25 people are carriers of the CF gene. And what's a carrier, you may ask? Well, a carrier is a person who is not suffered from CF but carries a faulty gene that causes cystic fibrosis. A carrier has no telltale signs, telltale signs that they are carriers and the only way of determining if they are a carrier is by a uh, screening test, which is uh, a blood sample or a saliva swab. So, carriers can pass down the faulty gene throughout generations without it ever being noticed until the end occurs. And as I said at the beginning, it can occur when you inherit a faulty gene from each of your parents. So, if two carriers have a child, that child has a 1 in 4 chance of having a CF, a 2 in 4 chance of being a carrier and therefore keeping the faulty gene going down the, down the family tree, and a 1 in 4 chance of not having any CF gene whatsoever. Now, with Gibraltar's population being at around 30,000, there are a potential 1,200 carriers in Gibraltar who are completely unaware that they are carriers. I'll bring it even closer to home. There are around 100 people here tonight, and that means that four of you are carriers. And you may think, well, I've had children, and they're fine, therefore I'm not a carrier. But I'm afraid that's not the case as you could have passed a false gene down to them and they can now be carriers themselves. It's an infinite worth of possibilities really you could never know until it has happened so they happens in most cases. So as I said, moving away from the genetic side of CS, I'd like to talk a little about the illness itself. CS makes your body produce thick, sticky mucus mainly in your lungs and digestive system, which makes it hard to breathe and digest your food. Because the mucus is so sticky, bacteria clings onto it, and that's why we get such recurrent chest infections. 
The mucus is really hard to get out of our lungs, so we need to have physiotherapy to get as much of it as possible. Because if not, it ends up sitting there, festering, which sounds disgusting, and then it scars your lungs. That's what the word fibrosis means in cystic fibrosis. And in the digestive system, the mucus clogs the stuff in the pancreas, which makes it hard for the body to digest food, leading to things such as malnutrition, premature osteoporosis, poor growth, and even delayed puberty. In late life, we can also suffer a thing called cystic fibrosis-related diabetes, which is a unique type of diabetes that combines both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, which is uh, a unique one that only people with CF suffer from. Now, there is a general misconception that CF is a lung disease, but as you can see, it's so much more than that. It does affect most critically the lungs and the digestive system. But there are many other factors such as liver failure, heart failure, premature arthritis, which is usually caused from the adverse effects of steroids which we take to control lung infection. Then there's hearing loss, sinus polyps, gallstones, infertility, pulmonary hypertension, and that's just the name of some, some of the adverse effects. So us CS sufferers take on average 60 tablets a day. That's 420 tablets a week. 1,800 tablets a month and 21,840 tablets a year. And for me personally, each tablet is a piercing reminder that my body is held hostage to a condition for which there is no cure. And that's only the tablets. Then comes the two day sessions of physiotherapy, the nebulizers, the intravenous antibiotics, and yet I still find time to enjoy life. <laughs> There is no cure for CS yet, yet, and the average life expectancy is 35. Now, so many people have told me, oh, I could leave here tonight and get run over by a bus. So, from hearing that example so many times, I actually decided to look up the statistics. And Google reckons that 1 in 10,000 people actually die from being run over by a bus. Whereas, in harsh contrast, 1 in 2 people die from CS before the age of 35. And with CS, you aren't encouraged to physically be in contact with other CS sufferers due to high risk of cross infection. And being denied a chance to support and be supported by somebody who knows exactly what you're going through and understands your, your worries about not being able to have kids, your fear of not being there to raise your children if you can have them, and they understand why you never go to stop every single day. And that's why I'm grateful that we live in the era of computers and internet and social networks. And I, I've met most people on the internet who have served as great support and as inspiration. So I think it's a case of how you see your glass half empty or half full. Now I personally look at my glass half full and I will enjoy everything. So I first had the idea about starting the charity in February when I spent a lot of time in hospital in Seville suffering from a punctured lung. I felt so far away from home and my husband had to live in a hotel next to the hospital. I had very limited family visits and we were just so far away. It made me realise that I wanted to make people aware about CF in gym. I realised that I was hold I realised that I was holding the torch of CF and it was time to stand up and let you all know what CF is and to let you all know that Gibraltar is not immune to CF. The CSFG started out as a mere Facebook group called the Cystic Fibrosis Awareness Group, which I opened in March on my return to Gibraltar. I opened it with the hope of raising some awareness in the community and just sharing my story. And then something really amazing happened and it just blossomed in a way that I never imagined possible. I got a lot of response from the community with people offering support to do bike rides, paper tables, and after great response and the amount of members multiplying by the day, <coughs> I decided to register CFMG as a charity in Gibraltar with the aim of raising public awareness about CF, having contact with the GHA for means of attainment, creation, maintenance, and supervision of medical and social facilities to provide the treatment and support of the persons and families affected by cystic fibrosis in Gibraltar, be it present or future. And today, the CF group on Facebook stands over 1,800 members strong, and that's something that I am very, very proud of. So, thank you all for being members. Thank you.